We need to talk. Sure. Let's talk. It's about my mother. Rather, about what she found. I didn't tell you this before, because I didn't know if I could trust you. I, I think I know why they took my mom. She was dangerous to NAR. It wasn't a coincidence. She saw something. Even took a photo. You see, when NAR first came here, they pretended to be friendly. They offered free examinations to several sample shells, and even promised my mother medical assistance. It was all a ruse, of course. My mother was invited to their lab, and she ended up seeing something she wasn't supposed to. She was inside their lab? You should have told me about this sooner. Do you know what she saw? They were running experiments with Chernobyl light on human subjects. All volunteers, of course. Soon after that, people started vanishing, my mom included. Do you still have the photo? No. My mom always kept it on her. Is there any other proof to back up your mother's account? No, but I can't see my mother lying about something like that. She only ever had the Samuel Shell's best interest at heart. My mother was the least selfish person I've ever known. She wanted to help everyone who suffered from the Chernobyl disaster in any way she could. She paid the ultimate price for her kind heart. Now, I have to find out why and make this right. I get it. Really. She sounds like an amazing lady. How can I help? I know it's a lot to ask, but I need to know what my mother saw in that lab. I need you to go to Lenin Square and get inside. There must be something there incriminating NAR. This will help your search for Tatiana as well. If she's in the zone, she must somehow be part of all of this. It won't be easy, but I'll definitely try. Igor, a moment, please. I heard you talking to our she-wolf here. You don't want to go to Lenin Square. I don't think you're ready. Who knows what you'll be up against? I think I've proved myself quite capable, no? You can harness the power of Chernobylite, an impressive feat. But what if they find a way to disable it? I've been taking risks pretty much since the beginning. It's the only way forward. I admire your grit. But I've seen guys like you in the field. They never quit. Until they're dead. It seems that Olga's mother was onto something. Something that got her killed. Could it be the key to finding out about the NAR's plans? Just be very careful, my love. I feel you getting closer to the heart of evil. Soon you may reach a point of no return. Head for the lab, Igor. Should be in the middle of NAR's camp. See if you can slip in unnoticed. Don't get in any fight unless you have to. Sure thing, Mum. And don't worry. I've got my sweater. You've got some issues, don't you? Okay. Now's not the time to get distracted. Locate the lab and try to reach it without drawing attention. You don't want to fight all these guys at once.
Uh, I wonder what my wife is doing right now. Probably hanging out with her stupid hipster friends. I knew it. They're conducting experiments at the power plant. But why are they in such a hurry? After all, Chernobyl belongs to them. Do? Who are you? What are you doing in here? That man on the phone. Who was it? You're... You're Kiminyuk. Dear God, please don't hurt me. I asked you a goddamn question. My boss, you mean? I, 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 I don't know his real identity. Uh, almost nobody does, I swear. Do you really want to play it this way? I can see you're scared, and rightfully so. But it seems you're deliberately trying my patience. No, not at all, sir. Uh, please, I, I can't tell you what I don't know. But I can tell you other things. Just ask. Just don't kill me. I can be useful. You'll see. Vanya, my patience is wearing thin. Where are those damned chemicals? Answer him. But casually. Relax. Yes, yes, I... Uh, I'm sorry. I'll send them right away. Apologies for the delay. Spare me the excuses and move! I need that core tires epoxide and I need it now! You two, continue without me. I hope for your sake you don't screw this up. It would be best if you forgot I was ever here. Of course, of course. I won't tell a soul. Look at the tissue structure. This used to be a liver, if you can believe it. We need to collect samples. The brain is hyperactive. Vanya? Finally! Who the hell are you? What did you do with Vanya? Stay very still if you want to live. Please don't hurt us. We're scientists. We... Yeah, so was Dr. Mengele. Are you performing a vivisection without anesthesia? Administering shots of typhus? What are you doing, exactly? I really want to know. No, nothing like that. We're not beasts. We treat our patients as humanely as possible. But you have to understand that... Scientific advancement requires sacrifice. 
<laughs> Other people's sacrifice. You make it sound sinister. But yes, everything we do is for the greater good. How does it work? Are you shooting these poor souls up full of Chernobylite? I can't talk about that. The NDA we signed is very strict. The penalties... Did you just say NDA? Are you for real? Stop being a corporate stooge and start thinking about your own life. Sure, sure, you're right, of course. We started out giving them shots, but that was just the first stage. We're way past that now. <laughs> uh-huh. It was, you see. The fatality rate was... It didn't bring the desired results. We've moved from administering nano-solutions to directly editing human genomes to enhance them with Chernobylite. We've developed our own Chernobylite CRISPR. Your patients or subjects, whatever you call them. Especially the locals. What happened to them? Which ones? There were many patients here. Some of them didn't make it past the final phase. The others, we don't know. Don't let him dodge the question. Make him talk. Look, please, can we all try to stay calm? Let us explain. Modifying genomes is only the first step. Next, we induce a state of superconsciousness in the subject's gamma brain waves. It's basic neurology. The sympathetic nervous system begins to release enormous amounts of energy straight to the brain via the thalamic gate at the brainstem. When the thalamic gate opens, the energy flows to the pineal gland and... Well, there you go. I don't like to use this term, but it opens a third eye. A third eye? Right. Then what? Enhanced by Chernobylite, the pineal gland can do incredible things. Release all kinds of energy, and even influence physical objects, as in telekinesis. You're torturing people so they can bend spoons with their mind? God, what kind of quacks are you? This is all following the scientific method, believe me. These are closely monitored, replicable experiments. Anyway, when the subject is ready for the final stage, we put them in an induced coma. Contrary to what you might think, it's for their own good. Explain, and fast. What is this final stage? Our boss calls it communion. It's when the subject's gamma brain waves interact with Chernobylite's mental waves, or, well, to tell you the truth, we don't know exactly what it is. Chernobylite is like a virus, in a way. It's not exactly inorganic matter, but neither is it a living organism. It's something in between. And it produces a type of brainwave, even though it clearly has no structured organic tissue. Well, what's the purpose of this communion? This is where it gets really interesting. You know that Chernobylite can be used to create wormholes, right? You've been doing it yourself. But these wormholes are special. Haven't you noticed? They're not a purely physical phenomenon. I don't understand. What else could they be? We know what singularities and the tunnels should look like. We know what they are in theory. But has anyone actually been inside one before? Bullshit. I've studied Chernobylite too. The exotic energy it contains is powerful enough to create quasi-black holes and passages between them. We thought so too, at first. But think about this. What if there was an organism, or a virus, an entity powerful enough to create its own singularities? No biological organism could encapsulate that kind of energy, or survive if it did. A living entity would be torn to shreds. But Chernobylite is not a normal biological organism, is it? We have no idea what it is. Just try and consider the possibility that the wormholes you're walking into are not something created outside of Chernobylite. They are Chernobylite. You're traveling through the veins and corridors of its multidimensional body. But what does that have to do with this communion thing? Isn't it obvious? We're trying to communicate with Chernobylite, or somehow influence it through the mental energy of our subjects. But getting inside this thing's mind, or whatever it is, must be a truly disturbing experience. You're fucking insane, both of you. You need to stay away from the morphine cabinet for a while. I've heard enough. Who's your patient here? I'm not sure, but it... She must have been carefully selected. Selected? How? Did she volunteer? 
or will she maybe run down and captured by soldiers in the woods? Talk! I'm not familiar with the selection process. Our boss would know, but we know very little about him. What's your boss in charge of, exactly? The entire biotech division, pretty much everything Chernobylite related, but mainly the impact on human physical and psychological functions. Clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. Hmm. How does this work with Chernobylite? It's similar to a standard gene editing tool. We take specialized protein from a certain bacteria, modify it with Chernobylite, and then target the exact genes we want to modify. Wait, I know more about physics than genetics, but CRISPR is usually done on embryos, right? And it takes time, sometimes even years, for mutations to show. Our boss developed his own methods. The process is applied directly in the subject's body. The speed of the mutations has increased exponentially. It no longer takes years, but weeks, sometimes mere days. Marvellous, isn't it? Enough. All I've got from you so far is a bunch of gibberish. I want to see the actual research. Where do you keep your data? All the research data? Check the database in this computer. Everything can be accessed from here. It's password protected, isn't it? Promise not to kill us and we'll tell you. Don't worry, I don't give a shit about you. Password. 23 hash 98 S dollar. Listen to me very carefully, Igor. This research, this data, it's too dangerous to exist. My people died because of it. Delete everything. It won't bring my mother back, but at least no one will profit from her death and the deaths of others. You need to download this research, Mousy. This is the Rat King's brain stash. It's dangerous, yes, and inhuman. But it could contain the key to defeating him. These guys are telling the truth. They really achieved something incredible here. Why did you do it? God damn you! You did good, Igor. We will turn this information into a weapon against the Rat King. I'm sorry, Olga. Nobody deserves to die so horribly. I was hoping for some good news, but perhaps I was foolish. My mother, these people, they were all just used, processed. How could anyone do something like this? Anyway, did you find anything of value? Not sure yet. Bizarre theories about Chernobylite, mostly. I don't know if I want to get into the details yet. Try me. I'm not a bookworm like you, but I'm not stupid either. Well, NAR seems to think Chernobylite is like a giant turtle that carries our universe on its back. They figure they can tame it and ride it wherever they want. Like a pet. A turtle? It's just a metaphor, but the scientific theory behind it is no less insane. Right. Uh, thanks for trying, I guess. We... I... I have something to tell you, Igor. What's wrong, Olga? You don't seem like yourself today. I'm totally fine. I just... I've been having these terrible headaches lately, but never mind that. I've been reconsidering our arrangement, and I've decided I need to go. What do you mean? Go? Go where? Don't play dumb, Igor. It doesn't go with your big brain. I'm leaving. 
I joined you thinking you represented the change this place needs. For us. For the zone. For the Samo shells. I care about you and your people, Olga. You know I do. I helped you, didn't I? You only helped me when it meant helping your own cause. I tried to reason with you. I pleaded with you. I tried to get you to see things my way. I hoped you would help me, even if we don't agree on every detail. Friends do that for each other, you know. But I am your friend, Olga, and I'm trying. What do you want from me? I don't want anything from you anymore, Igor. That ship has sailed. Sailed? Right. Can't you see I'm your best chance? I thought so too, but something happened recently. What something? What's going on with you, Olga? Shut the fuck up. Nothing's wrong with me, Kimanook. Come on, Olga. We've been through so much together. Are you going to throw it all away because of some misunderstanding? You still don't get it, obviously. You promised to help me and instead you shit on me and my needs. My people's needs are critical. They're facing new dangers every day. The Lurkers. N.A.R. They need my help at this very moment, not whenever you get around to it. I lost all my hope, Kimanook. You took from me the only thing that kept me going. But thankfully, she found me. She found me when I needed her most. I have no idea who you're talking about, but I really do want to help you and your people. And I will. Just... Trust me. Going to ask you a question, and I need an honest reply. Can you do that, Igor? If you had to choose between Tatiana and the others, what would you do? What kind of question is that? It's not that simple. She, I will make it super simple for you. Don't think, just answer. Bullshit. This isn't a zero-sum game. I knew it. I've got my answer. Olga, please, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm not under any obligation to save the world. No, you're you failed me. You also failed her. I wish I'd... Perhaps we'll see each other. Everyone, it's time to hit the power plant. We all know it's not going to be easy. We tried before, and not everyone made it. But this time we're smarter and better prepared. I know we can do this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can find Tachana and end NAR. Mercy, you're talking about striking at the heart of the Rat King. But have you learned everything possible about his plans? I have evidence that NAR was conducting Chernobylite experiments back in the 90s. Tachana and her baby were two of their subjects. With the rate at which their technology is progressing, soon nothing will be able to stop them. We must act now. What about that black mask-wearing motherfucker? Have you identified him? His name is Boris Glukov. He, Tachana and I were close friends until he betrayed us. He helped the KGB gather evidence against Tatyana, then continued to work for NAR after my accident. He experimented on himself with Chernobylite and ended up with great power. He's strong, one of the strongest, but we can beat him, together. I like the pep talk, Professor. I think you even gave me a bit of a job. But do we have the right tools for the job? Yes, we do. We've got everything we need to infiltrate the power plant. This is much bigger than anything any of us has done before. If you want to back out, this is your chance. One organization holding this much power is against everything I believe in. And besides, this is personal for me. Count me in. You know how I feel. The Red King must be stopped at all costs, Mousy. I'm in. I started out doing this for a paycheck. But I'm going to end it for my brother in arms. For Anton. Let's do this. 
Oh, you think I'm gonna back out now and miss the best part? Fuck no! I'm with you, Igor. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. We can use this to our advantage. We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You should take someone who can keep his cool when things go sideways, as they inevitably do. Trust me on that. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties! Ask anyone! All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. Firearms are my preferred method of solving problems, but I can definitely distract them. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. This is it, my love. The last stretch. You've been through so much for me. Make sure you're ready, because it will take everything you have. Your wits, your strength, your plan, your companion's loyalty. Everything. Good luck, my love. This is it. Today's the day. Whatever happens. Everything sorted, guys? Can we start our prisoner escort off? I'm ready. Though my hand still hurts like hell. If the uniform doesn't get us in, we have one more ace up our sleeve. Their friend-enemy password. They say, we quell the storm. And we reply, and ride the thunder. Remember it. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. How's my techie? Have you logged into their system? I'm in, Mousy. What do you need me to do? Overload their systems? Bypass security? You ask and I'll do it. But don't be rash. Once we get started, it's only a matter of time before they kick me out again. Spy check. How are my eyes and ears? Eyes are bright and my ears are wide open. I got the plans and codes up and I can hear those boring fuckers chatter like they were sitting in my lap. No worries, Igor. With me on your side, this'll be like walking to the grocery store. Sniper, are you in position? Have you got eyes on? Sure thing, Bonna. There are a few sentries outside the gate. That's obstacle number one. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to shoot someone in the head with a silenced rifle. So elegant, so efficient. All you have to do is give the order. Better use the side passage for now. You can always kill them on your way out. <laughs> Don't forget that you're a prisoner, Igor. Downcast, hopeless. Use this to our advantage.
Okay, showtime. This better work. Find the brass in the tent behind the gates. I assume you know the way. So far, so good. But it's getting harder now. NAR's upgraded some of the old security features. Security checkpoint. What used to be a radiation detector is now a biometric scanner. Clever. I already found the right database. I'll upload your biometric data and you can walk right through. They're behind cover. I can't take them all from this distance. But I could pop up, up those fuel tanks a few hundred meters behind your position. You can slip through it in the chaos. Bad thing is, I'll have to give up this position. Those NAR security systems can be broken by someone with enough know-how. Those IT wankers probably spent their upgrade budget on porn on premium content. Once those gates read my biometrics, my cover will be blown. We need to convince them somehow that we're friendlies. Tarakan, I like your thinking. One moment. Yes. Done and done. Those gates won't be a problem, Mercy. Time to move. With a little luck, they won't notice us. Should be very close. It's a large metal door to the tech access corridor. Nothing I can't handle. Remember the charges I prepare for breaching security doors? Powerful, but quiet. Like sticking a curling iron into a pound of butter. Or maybe you want to save them for later. Keep your hand down, Igor. There's a fucking sniper on the building above you. Stop yelling. How do you know? Picked it up on the radio. They haven't made you yet, but if you trigger the alarm, they'll come down on you like a swarm of Katyushas. Damn! If I force the lock, it'll trigger the alarm. This will be tough. I can try to remotely unlock the door without tripping the alarm, but no guarantees. You'll have to move very quickly, Mousy. If I put down the sniper, noise will no longer be an issue. Then you can get past that door with ease. The lock is wired to the alarm system but Sashko's charges will destroy both the lock and the trigger mechanism. I should be fine. Get the ball rolling, Sashko. Good riddance, s -wipe. Another life lost because of you. What happened to your grand plans? Your companion is about to meet his end in this reality. You should figure out what led to this so you can plan accordingly next time. What's happening? This had to happen, Igor. 
You need to be saved. We all need to be saved. Did you just... There's no other way. She asked me to save you from the worst fate imaginable. Have you lost your goddamn mind? You're not making any sense. You can run, Igor, but you cannot hide from What the this. fuck? The electronics are sizzling as if they're going to explode. That's to be expected, Melcy. The power plant's electrical system is antiquated, falling apart. We should find a way to short-circuit the power. I have access to the circuit board. Perhaps I can cut power to the nearest corridor. Have you been listening, Mousy? I can turn off the entire sector remotely, no problem. I'll only leave the light on at your location. I could run to the switchboard and shut the whole thing down, but you might as well call that suicide. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Today, the darkness is our friend, Mousy. You're completely now safe. Getting close to the reactor floor. I think we managed to dodge the main security detail. As long as we maintain our cover, we should be good. Step very fucking lightly now, Igor. The place is swarming with those cocksuckers. NAR's beefed up security around Ark for some reason. Either they're preparing for something, or you're walking straight into a goddamn trap. I'm in the Golden Corridor. It looks like NAR beefed up security after our little escapade. Not unexpected. Going in guns blazing is going to be a huge risk for you. I can kill them all right, but then I need to make myself scarce. Get the ball rolling, Sashko. Got it. Thanks for your help, Sashko. I'll see you at the victory party. Damn. We need to get past these scientists. The Brainiacs have their own dedicated comms. I can put my fabulous acting skills to work and tell them to fuck off, but it's a two-man job. The great rat catcher has smiled upon you today. I can help. Tara can. I like your thinking. Sounds good, Mousy. It shouldn't take long to hack the comms. Attention! Nemanja! Achtung! The reactor's about to explode! Run for your lives, everyone! What kind of nonsense is this? The reactor cannot ex- Fuck it, Anatoly. A break is a break. These old ventilation ducts will take me straight to the Ark. Oh. 
What the hell is this? Was it here before? Looks like some sci-fi fucking movie prop. The door is trapped. Touch it, and I'll spend my last moments on Earth convulsing on the dirty floor. This door wasn't supposed to be here. Mousy, the ventilation duct should not be secured. The Rat King is watching and waiting. I can feel it. Wait, Igor! Remember the map you borrowed from that fucker Semenov? It shows another way in. Guess it was worth it in the end, huh? Sashko's explosives might come in handy now. Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. Do it. The doors are behind you, Igor. Cut through the crap on the other side, and you'll find a nice, fat ventilation duct. Climb up in there, and it'll take you straight to the Ark. Are you seeing those creatures? I hope the bars hold. I might be able to open the gate from this panel, but there's a chance I'll release the things in those cages as well. So this is the heart of darkness. Just as menacing as I imagined it to be. I will gladly burn it all to the ground. The NAR will track me down afterwards, but I don't care. I have reached my destination, Igor. This place is one big fucking trap and totally off grid. The only way to open it from where you are is to crash the whole system. Unless you have some explosives. The Ark is just outside. Luckily, I still have some of Sasko's explosives. I can put them to good use here. All right, we're taking this gate down. Looks like we'll have to fight our way out. These guys are the last thing standing between me and Tatiana. I can't back down now. I'll fight my way in if I have to. Oh no, this sucks big time balls. I wish we had someone inside who could get those assholes to look the other way. There's no other choice. Engage your will! Bloody hell over here! I'm wounded!
Tatiana. Finally. Pretty hot for 60 years old. Igor, my love. My child. It's been so very long. But it's finally you. It has to be you. You know it in your heart, my love. I've been calling out to you for all these years, and you answered. But how? You shouldn't be here. It's a mistake. You'll only bring great misery on us all. My poor little boy. All of us together, finally. Release me, my love. Free me. What did you call me? I don't understand. What can I do? There's nothing you can do. You have to end this. Both of us. We were a mistake. An abomination. Close the portal. Destroy the connection. What connection? The connection is the strongest force in the universe. It cannot be destroyed. It has to be completed. It is our destiny. Go to the reactor. Find it, my love. It is waiting for you. Find what? No more waiting. Please, can't you just let me die? I can't take any more. Tanya? Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Tatiana, are you still there? Boris, help. Die. Igor. I don't understand. Oh, fuck. Reactor. Chernobylite. What, what do I do? Fuck, I need to figure this out! You took your time, Igor. Cut the crap. It's time you gave me some answers. Yes, we'll get to that. But since this is our last meeting, I want to ask you a question first. Fine. Just make it quick. What do you really hope to achieve, Igor? Isn't that obvious? I want to save Tatiana. You may find this surprising, but our goals are actually aligned. How's that? We were both going after the same thing. But this whole time, we've been chasing someone else's agenda without knowing it. Chernobylite's agenda. Come on, man. I've come too far to be fed a line of bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. Do you know who I am? I sure do, Boris. You were my closest friend until you decided to betray me. To take Tachana from me. Boris is dead. I killed him on that fateful night. April 26th, 1986. And took his identity. Good riddance. He was a treacherous piece of shit. You took his? Why? The more important question, the question you somehow failed to ask yourself all this time is... Who are you? Because you're not Professor Igor Kiminyuk. You never were. I am Igor Kiminyuk. I only changed my name to protect you and your mother. Protect me? How? By trying to kill me at every turn? If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it the first time we met at the power plant. Will you quit talking in fucking riddles? The truth is hard to swallow, I know. It was hard for me, too. You are me. Tachana isn't your fiance. She's mine. Everything you know about her, everything you remember, none of it is yours. You're living someone else's life. My life. You are my clone, sort of. You got my body, my brain, my skills, and most importantly, my memories from before the Chernobyl disaster. What are you saying? How is that even possible? Tatiana was sterile. That was our personal tragedy. But when Semenov imprisoned her after the Duga fiasco, she fell pregnant. At first, I thought Boris was the father, and I was angry with her. But that was another of Semenov's lies. 
He needed me to stay on the project and study Chernobylite. So he injected Tanya with the nano solution. What happened next was, I don't know what to call it, an immaculate conception. She gave birth to a boy, you. You grew much more quickly than other kids, but your mind didn't seem to follow. It was different somehow. The Chernobylite no doubt affected you in unpredictable ways. I never really considered you my son. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what to do with you. But it was obvious that Semenov would incorporate you into his experiments. Or maybe cut you open and rummage around inside. Until one night, Tanya, your mother, communicated with me telepathically, even though her body was in a coma. She pleaded with me to release you into the woods, and that's what I did. You're saying Tatiana's child, who you released in the woods in 1990? But that's impossible. Impossible! I don't remember any of this. Of course you don't. You looked like a teenager but had the mind of a small child. I remember giving you a sweater that Tatiana knitted for me. The night was so cold. It had my name on it. The sweater? I had it in the camp. I was imprisoned and... Yes, it could have been a trigger. Your mind somehow began to rebuild itself. Why in my image? I can only guess. Perhaps you were constructed from Tatiana's desires, from her expectations of a child. Funny how I called it pseudoscience. I suspect the process was somehow facilitated by the Chernobylite. But she's been calling me this whole time. She wanted me here. I'm afraid you were bamboozled, my poor boy. We all were. It wasn't Tanya who called you here, but it. Chernobylite? But the images, the voices. They felt so real, I know. Your mother was your biggest weakness, and the entity exploited that. It wanted you here. It has plans for you, you see. And I cannot allow it to succeed. Someone sent me a photo of Tatjana and the piece of Chernobylite. Those weren't hallucinations. They were real. I couldn't have constructed my portal gun without them. Oh, that. It was that bastard Semenov, of course. He wanted to bring you here as well. He never got over it when you vanished. Not that it matters now. I really hoped you would stay away. But it's too late now. I can't allow you to interact with the Entity in any way. Only one of us is leaving this room alive. Wait, can't we talk it over? We just did. Goodbye, son. Igor. I wish there was another way. Strong enough to save Tanya. Only I am. I wish there was another way. to be done. Not already. I promise to make it quick for Tachana's sake. You're better than me! Don't go 
easy on me. I will do the same for you. need a force field to defeat you. What? You... You should be dead! Yeah, I've been getting that a lot lately. Look familiar? Where did you get that from? Where else? I took it from you. From your cold, dead hands, Igor. I... What? Where? When? In a reality where you fucked up, my friend. From one of the many worlds bearing the brunt of your failures. Are you saying that you come from a different... that you're from... This is hell. You have no idea. Where are you going? Back to my screwed up world, of course. You know me. I'd prefer to die fighting. Wait! Don't waste the chance I've given you, Igor. Finish the job. It's over, my son. Close the portal. Cut the connection. Deny this thing away into our world. Do it now! Son, please. It will kill her. It will kill the love of my life. Of our life. Please, there's another way. Just let me go. I've suffered long enough. You can do this, son. You can be the man I could not. Be the better version of me. Go through the portal and face this thing. Undo the harm we both caused Tanya. No! Do not do this! Kill me! Just kill me, please! Finish it! It's time to end this once and for all. If anyone can hear me, run as far from here as you can. Everyone, run like hell. Thank you for showing me the way. I won't waste this, I promise. Goodbye. You can rest now. The protagonist never explained to his comrades exactly what happened at the power plant, but he came out changed. The Chernobylite vanished entirely. The zone is now free of it.
Igor stalkers drove off the remaining NAR troops and even convinced a few of them to join the cause. Now they're working together for the good of the sandwich shells, tracking down the few remaining monsters still roaming the area. Olivier never had the chance to change his own past and prevent the ambush that wiped out his team. His obsession almost steered him down the dark path of treachery, but in the end, he redeemed himself by helping Igor with his mission. Even though it cost him his life, because he had been a part of something bigger than himself, he was at peace in his final moments. In spite of his flaws, Olivier will always be remembered in the zone for his courage and grit. For this haunted place will always be a monument to broken heroes with a twisted past. Mikhail's life was always full of violence. He was the angriest, most obnoxious man Igor had ever known, but he was also unfailingly honest, both with himself and others. Mikhail's thirst to avenge his murdered friends was his main driving force, but working with Igor and the others eventually made him appreciate the kinder aspects of life. In spite of his rough manner and the darkness inside him, Igor came to like the neurotic stalker and, by the end, considered him a true colleague. Mikhail decided to remain in the zone and join the others in protecting their shared home. Sashko had always been the lone wolf and daredevil of the zone. Life had always been harsh for him, and he learned the hard way to rely only on himself. His crusade against NAR began with a desire for closure regarding his brother Ruslan's death, but Igor's quest to find Tatiana was what kept him going until the finish line. After the events in the zone, Sashko decided to go back to Moscow and face the hard truth about his parents' death. Eventually, he would return to Pripyat, which became his second home. Tarakan's fight against the Rat King has reached an end. Having barely survived the zone, he realized his time was up. Now, someone else must carry the torch and defeat the evil lurking in the power plant. But Tarakan wasn't worried. After all, he had prepared Igor and others well. Tarakan's true identity was never discovered. Was he a madman, a saint, a spy? Perhaps he was all of these, or perhaps none of them. But one thing is certain. The old man was a true child of Pripyat. His restless soul will forever wander its marshes and woods. Like so many before him, General Koslov made the wrong choices while chasing a dream of the good life. War taught him about the cruelty and inevitability of loss, leaving him indifferent to human suffering. His experiences made him strong, but also blind to the serendipitous moments which could have placed his life on a different trajectory. And so his death was as empty as his life, General Koslov spent his final moments consumed with bitterness. If I only had another chance, he said to himself. Alas, that is a privilege afforded to very few. Semenov's ambitions and neuroses eventually got him killed. He was a brilliant scientist, but could never come to terms with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though not a devout communist, Semenov could not stomach the chaotic aftermath, for it reflected the emptiness of his own heart. And so he chased his green Chernobylite dream, hoping his experiments would usher in a new world order. In reality, what he sought was to fill the gaping void in his own soul. In the end, everything he thought he had achieved disintegrated into nothing. 
he died and NAR dissolved, most of its mercenaries wiped out by either the shadows or the Samoshiels. All that remains of NAR in the zone are the empty barracks and derelict labs, stark reminders of a misguided ambition based on human misery. Faced with staggering losses, the shareholders halted all funding, 